question here today here, to mask or not to mask. When did ma putting a mask on have a political implication to it? How did this get turned into another political football? It's, uh, it's definitely something wrong with that. Yeah, um, I mean, you think about it. I, I, I'll give you a perfect example. Are we on Facebook now? We should be on Facebook now here, I think. Let me see. Yes, we, we're on. So live. welcome to everybody who's tuning in today here. We're our health talks with Dr. Trin. As I said, I'm circling the globe here. I'm taking social uh, distancing to a new height here. And the question today that everybody keeps asking me is to mask or not to mask? That is the question. I went to... Um, it was Memorial Day weekend this past weekend. And so I thought, well, I'll get out a little bit. I'm like a little a groundhog. I'll stick my head out, look around the hole and see how many more weeks of winter are left here. And I was very upset when I came home. Almost mm. nobody had a mask on. I went to the gas pump. People are pumping all around me. No mask. Walking, right? Teenagers are congregated at places that up by the restaurants. People are mm -hmm. walking in and out of stores. I went up to Home Depot. A few more people had masks, but nobody social dis. They made you stand in line to get in, but everybody was crowded, one against the other, anxious. I got to go. I got to get there. And I thought, did did we not learn anything in the last two months? Was it all for naught? It's uh, yeah. It's some of it is politics related. Yeah. In other words, I, it, it's like the, um, I don't know if people remember this analogy, but the Bloods and the Crips, the two gangs up in East, uh, South Central LA that I think still fighting it out, but fought for decades. And, it, and they distinguished themselves by the colors they wore. If you wore red and I wore blue, we were instant enemies. And we've carried right. that over now into this world of, of, uh, of community spread. Uh, there are those that are defiantly saying, I am never going to wear a mask. Ain't no way. And, and I'm proud. And so that shows I'm with the president or with somebody here. And others are saying, no, 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 this is crazy. I'm going to wear a mask. It's not about my health or your health. It's about m my freedom and you can't tell me what to do. And so we're like little kids. I won't, I won't, I won't. Yeah, somehow we have... Uh... And not everyone does this no. uh, because I, there's a lot of masking uh, when I go to Costco and and there are um, shops and stores that do require and restaurants that require some masking. To yes, be and I think if they didn't, I don't think people would. I think the 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 uh, mm -hmm. couple stores I went to, you know, they're practicing this. They want to make their customers feel safe, but the customers themselves seem to say, I'm not going to get it, and I either don't believe in this, or I don't want to do it, or uh, it's all a hoax, or I, I don't know. It, it, I, I was completely wrong. I thought mask would be de rigueur, to use a French term here. I thought mm -hmm. everybody would, it would be cool to wear a mask. I thought everybody would be like at Halloween, everybody loves to dress up. So I thought we'd all have these crazy masks. You know, I have mine sitting here. I was trying to get something silly on it or whatever here. Nice, nice. And, and I thought, you know, uh, why don't we make this a fun thing? Celebrities all have goofy pictures on them. Uh, the president would have uh, MAGA on it. Everybody would have something. And we'd, we'd, we'd use the mask to, uh, as a fashion right. statement, as a fun statement, maybe as a political statement. But I didn't know that people wouldn't want to wear them at all. Not for... Not for per, not for any scientific reason, just to make a point. Yes, there are different types of masks. Um, do you know the difference between like a, like an N95 mask versus a surgical mask? I don't. Versus a a mask that's homemade, like uh, by the public. Right. I had one of those earlier. Yeah. So I have mm -hmm. I have all three versions here to talk about today. Here I have. The originally the do-it-yourself napkin mask here that I tried making with some rubber bands, <laughs> not very successfully. Then right, I right. had the somebody who could sew, just put some cloth on. Ooh, that's a nice one. That was a nice one. And then I actually through Amazon finally purchased one of these N95. And this one has a, um, I don't know if I can pull it out here, but it has a little filter in it that you can slip in and out. How much is that mask, by the way, that you bought on Amazon? I think it was about fifteen or twenty dollars. This is back when fifteen to twenty bucks for one mask. Yeah, well, this one supposedly is washable. I didn't put the little 
thing in there, but there's uh, a little pocket yeah, that you yeah. can put a little um, a little extra carbon filter in there uh, for right. it here. So I thought, yeah, yes. you know, 15 bucks for something, they probably made them 15 cents to make this here, but I thought this would be, everybody would find their own comfort level and we would all be laughing and we'd make fun of this thing and it would be, it would just be one minor inconvenience because think about this, folks. Mm -hmm. If we all wore a mask to protect ourselves uh, and to protect others and to protect ourselves, the inhale, the exhale and the inhale, and if we washed our hands and kept six feet apart, those three simple little things, we probably could reopen the whole country and go about our daily lives with this minor inconvenience for the next six months, year, however it longs to, to get herd immunity, either artificially right, right. through a vaccine or because everybody gets sick. Uh, we could go about our daily lives again, which is what everybody wants. But because we're not willing to even do that, many aren't willing to do that, some, that's going to mean a prolonged problem. It, uh, yes, yes, you, you are right. Um, the cool thing I think is that, um, probably two months ago when I, if I were to walk into Costco two months ago mm -hmm. and, uh, and had a mask on, folks will look at me like really strange. Yes. Right. Uh, now if I walk into Costco without a mask, everyone will look at me strange <laughs> and, and i thought people would do the same if you walked into costco without a mask people would give you that kind of dirty look like what are you doing you're 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 my children are here i've got a sick grandparent at home why why are you i don't it's care what you want to do but you're risking my life here too and others yeah did you it, see it the be... um, i'm sorry did you see the um governor of north dakota uh, a very conservative republican mm -hmm. went on television last week and he literally started crying. He broke down a little bit and he got so emotional. He said, this is not about politics. Don't, don't assume that just because somebody has a mask on, they're trying to make a political statement. They might have a sick child at home. They might have asthma, you know, and, and by you not, not only respecting their things, but doing what this yourself, you show support for them. You show, kindness you you show care for others right i i saw some uh, video that was being passed around apparently by uh by uh i'm trying to remember who the speaker was but it was uh, it was it was a neurosurgeon i think mm -hmm. who made a statement that wearing a mask is dangerous for your health yeah and uh i heard I that like, i didn't wow. see it but yeah 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 and it's one of these viral things that's going around um but if that's the case uh if that's true then we are purposely you know killing off our nurses and doctors in every hospital in the yeah, world because they're exactly. all wearing masks <laughs> exactly. you know when... so so explain to me the psychological i know you're not a psychologist but w let's all play amateur psychologist here for a minute what is it that makes people want to defy this idea? Is I it, think, it and I, as I, Americans, as okay. American, we don't like being told what to do. Boy, that's number the one, truth, right? <laughs> right? Number two, we don't like being told what to do, specifically by our government yes right it's, uh, they can't it's tell me i'm an american i can do anything i wanted just freedom you know right 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 and i get that right um i totally get that especially if i'm on the other side of the political view yeah right if let's say let's say the, the republicans are in charge and and i'm a democrat right. you know i don't want to listen to the republicans vice versa if right. the democrats right. are in charge and i'm a republican you know i don't trust the government right right so so if the other side of your political view is in charge, obviously it increases even more distrust. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, and so, if the government is saying you should wear a mask, then then my first inclination is hell no, right? Yeah, right. Um, why should I wear a mask, especially from the other side telling me this? And so, so oftentimes that comes into view, and and it cannot. 
And then what we do is we go online and and we look for the we we you know on the internet you can search for anything you want right to support your view right? right and what's scary is we we have these conclusions and then we go and we look for data to support our conclusions exactly as opposed to having the data lead us to our conclusion yes right we draw the conclusion first and then we look for the data right, right to and then we ignore the other stuff, the the other data that right. that we don't agree with, right? And that right. happens all the time, uh, with and it's just human nature sometimes. So, so how do we it, turn this around? How do we have a forum here today? People are tuned in. Thank you all for joining us. Many people are saying, "Hey, Doc, morning, Doc." Um, <laughs> uh, what do you all think out there? Are you are you wearing your mask? Um, yeah, are you guys wearing masks? Don't wear masks. Uh, I, I can see you guys on uh, at least on the uh, Health Toss Without the Trend Facebook group. Yeah, I'd love to hear from people because I was very shocked and and somewhat I was angry. I came back and I said, "This is crazy." Um, people are. I get that we were cooped up and we want to get out, but with this couple minor adjustments, a mask, keep some distance, and wash your hands, <laughs> uh, we can go about our daily lives and learn to live with this thing until we can get past it. Um, and and we can limit the number of people that have to get sick and die. If we don't do these things, it's going to get worse again. It's going to spike up. Everybody knows it. We all know it. And people seem to think that's just the way it is. I'm not going to give an inch. So if 100,000 more people have to die, so be it. Yeah. Um well, well, Sherry says yes. Kent says no. Melissa says, uh, I think part of the issue is conflicting information coming out from the start. Uh, the Initially, the CDC says nobody needs a mask at first. That's true. That's and true. Then, then and then we're their told tune, to wear right? them later on. And right. so it is kind of confusing. Um, so I'd love to hear from the people, like you said, Kent, or whatever, if you, if you could just respond back. I'd love to get some, some input, really, because I'm confused. Uh, why does he choose not to wear a mask? Is it? Yeah, give us your input, Kent, uh, on uh, on the chat. Yeah, what what's your? I don't think it's not one of those topics where people say I haven't thought about it or whatever. People have seemed to have formed an opinion, yes or no. I've decided I'm not going to wear, it. and I get it. I don't like wearing the mask. I get it. It fogs up my glasses. It's claustrophobic. Right? It's claustrophobic. It's claustrophobic I can't see my face. I can't see you talk. I I, I get that it's not comfortable. Yeah, but I like it when I have my sunglasses on. Oh, like, well, yeah, then you look kind of cool. Yeah, and then I have my Walking Dead mask. Have Do you, you? See, yeah, I, 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 I think dead. I said that. Why Why can't we make this a fun thing? And if, if we've got to do this for a while, if we're going to do this for a while, why can't we turn it into a fun exercise here? Yeah, Quinn says, uh, good morning, doctor. We're definitely wearing masks. Uh, she's from the public health department, by the way. Oh. Nurse online uh well, well sure and what do you think quinn I, I again i i'm not trying to shame anybody kent i'd really really appreciate your point of view here on this because i don't get it i i but maybe again because i'm coming from a different point of view i'm just i'm trying to understand those that uh don't want to wear a mask i'll throw another match onto the fire here today and this yeah. could be uh this can be uh, I tend to be more of a liberal, but this can be a liberal uh, disease these days where we don't, left and right, we don't trust vaccines. One third of Americans, they surveyed over the one, one survey, I said one third, one third of the Americans said, if you come out with a vaccine tomorrow, I'm not going to take it. I'm curious what our audience thinks about vaccines. Yeah. Okay, guys, do would you trust a vaccine if it came out? Uh, yes or no? Yeah, and uh, why? And, and why? Okay, Kent says, uh, I think we cross-contaminate them every time we take it on and off. Okay. I do it where in the grocery stores where, or where required. Okay. I believe in herd immunity. Yes, yes. We, we do cross-contaminate them. That's a good point, Ken. So talk and about that a little how bit. How you hold your mask. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I should go and, and get a mask and put it on and I'll show you how to. Let's do that. That would be very helpful because that is a point. You know, I sometimes wonder, yeah. am I just Let me going go through? grab a mask real quick. Sherry says she'll never take a vaccine. 
uh, others are still kind of wondering about vaccines. But let me go get a mask and I'll show you how to actually put it on, take it off and all that. Does that Perfect. sound good? That sounds good. While you're doing that, we'll continue the conversation here, guys. I really do appreciate this forum because we don't have many places that we can talk about these issues. And I mean talk, not scream, not yell. I'm not trying to berate, belittle anybody. I'm sharing my concerns and my frustrations, and I hope that others will do the same. Vaccines are an interesting question. My sister-in-law, who is one of the most liberal people I know in the world, uh, an ardent vegan, all this stuff, she's completely against a uh, vaccine. She's horrified. She, she buys into the idea, right or wrong, that uh, vaccines can lead to autism. Same thing Jenny McCarthy and other celebrities have put forth. Uh, and she's just horrified by anybody. We had our grandson vaccinated to go to school and she was horrified. And so she'd be one of those that would say, I don't trust vaccines and I don't think I would take one here. So Dr. Yeah. Trin's back with his mask here. I was just sharing my own personal story of I have a very extremely liberal sister-in-law, radically you know, vegan, and she doesn't believe in vaccines at all. She's like Jenny McCarthy and other celebrities, so she would not take a vaccine, any vaccine. Right, right. As a matter of fact, I mean, we have the flu vaccine, and less than 50% of Americans actually take it every year. I'm ashamed to say that until this year, I never I did. I poo-pooed it. I said, Pfft. It's not that effective. It's putting a live disease in my body. I'm not sure I want to do this. And uh, but this year I woke up and I thought, what am I, five? Right. This, um, Christine, uh, this is a N95 mask. And to describe what this, we've all learned this term now. I never knew this term until a couple months ago. N95. Okay, guys, <clears throat> type into the chat box. What does N95 mean to you? Type in the chat box. What does N95 mean to you? It meant nothing up until two months ago, but now I know it's the term of the <laughs> best mask. What, what does it do that is N95 mask? And, and it's, it's no good if it's an N94 or an N92. I don't know how many different grade grades there are of masks here. But. Yeah. So it kind of goes like this. That's a so, good. That one sits more snugly. If that's a uh -huh. word, correct word, snugger, more snuggly imagine than. If, uh, imagine if, if we actually wore a mask, around the flu season. Yeah. Well, what, what will happen to the flu? It, it would. The flu way would down. fly. Yeah. Right. Way down. Yes. Yes. Cindy says, uh, Jennifer's N95 filters 100 percent. Actually, it filters 95%. That's why they call it N95. Oh, ta-da. <laughs> okay. N. I don't know why they have to use the word letter N. I don't know if there's an A95 or a Z95. but uh... <laughs> Yes, yeah, medical grade. So physicians wear uh, N95 when we're doing procedures in the hospital where we may be exposed to like respiratory droplets. Mm-hmm. Uh, like intubating, right? Intubating a patient. That's when you stick uh, a tube down their throat, right? An opportunity or, or up their nose. Or when we're in the ER, and I'm in the ER every week, if there's a patient that is suspicious for possible COVID, N95 masks are pretty much required. Okay. Uh, with that. So, now, so it's for medical folks. And what's the right way to put it on and take it off? Because yours seems to fit snugger than mine does. Yeah. So, so. You, so to take it off, you don't go like this mm. because you touched it. Because this is the contaminated part, right? So this is what Kent Palmer is talking about. Right. Uh, when oftentimes we're like this, and now our hands is contaminated. Ah. Right. Does that make sense? So I've touched. I breathe. Now that I've put the contaminant onto the mask, and now I touch the mask. Right. Now you've touched the mask, right? And then. So, so if you're in front of a patient, you're like, and they're coughing, right? Mm -hmm. And if they're coughing and all their stuff is here, mm -hmm. when you take it off, it's a really careful way of taking it off where you're not, you don't want to touch this part when you're taking it off. Okay. Because this is the contaminated part. So, so if you really want to do this right, don't take it off by touching the front of the mask. So that's Ken's point, right? Okay. It's a really good point. Um, by the way, I read somewhere lately that there were two uh, two runners, two kids who were running with masks on, and they died or something like that. They mm -hmm. dropped dead, uh, and there was blame on their mask. 
Uh, I don't know what the actual story was, but um, so it, it restricted their breathing, it or it probably kept... restricted oxygen, and they were breathing in their carbon dioxide. Is what I think uh, oh. was happening. Um, yeah, Quinn says uh, it filters out less than zero point three microns um, of all bacteria and mold and things of that sort. Uh, K now, have you heard of KN ninety five? K and then K the letter K N ninety five. No. Yeah, the the term K in front of it and uh, and Sherry Ross is asking this. I think it comes from China. Uh, uh, is the is where it says K. Does the K mean it's crappy? Doesn't work as good? No, <laughs> <Yeah>. probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I won't comment on that one. <laughs> it is, Cindy, it is kind of uncomfortable to wear, but this is a medically grade mask. This here is a non medical grade mask. This is one that you can kind of sew at yeah, home. That's the other one I had here. Let this me see the one, one you got there, right? Um, so this one goes like, yeah, Amy says, I wear fabric masks outside the N95 for comfort fitting. Yes. So she wears both. She puts the N95 and yeah. then this one. Oh. This is interesting. This yeah. this one's kind of weird. I bought this, but it kind of goes on. It doesn't fit that well, and you got to pull the strings on it. Ah. I had the other problem. Uh, I, this is a rubber band one, and it pulls my ears out, so they, they make funny yeah. looks here. I look like I'm a But this hobbit. is my walking dead yeah cool this is like the best mask ever because it's the walking dead zombie mask see why I can't we a... just i thought we'd all have our own funny stories we'd have our kids picture on it we'd have our dog we'd have some goofy cartoon character we'd all have our own personal a way to adapt this and then it would start a conversation and people would laugh and they say oh look at that yeah, we. Um, I'm looking for a mask that has a tongue out emoji. Yeah, wouldn't that be? Well, you know, they. Uh, I think I've seen one because the old Rolling Stones, the famous right. uh, rack, <laughs> cover with the big tongue coming out. I think I've seen one of those. I'll have to get you one here. Yeah, so so I need to figure out this little ribbon thing here on, on this long thing because right now I'm just pulling it yeah. and I'm making a bow. So a let's bow. go back to the other question. So we've talked about masks and there are those even on this stream who have decided masks are of limited value or I'm not gonna wear them in certain situations. Anybody out there who, and, and we won't call you out on this, I'm not gonna shame you on this, but I really would like to know if there's anybody out here who believes that this is all a hoax, this is all overblown, the masks are unnecessary, you know, all that kind of stuff. Only I'll do it if, in a restaurant, but I'm not going to do it anywhere else because this is just ridiculous. I've had people come through our studio here. I say, where's your mask? And I say, oh, it's in my car. I never use the darn thing. I keep it because I guess I have to have one. But I, I not only hate it, I just... Ah. It's uncomfortable. Um, but uh, I can tell you that the countries that mask first mm -hmm. when COVID came out are the countries with low death rates. South Korea is certainly one. Uh, and, and again, yeah, uh, Taiwan, Taiwan, Hong, Vietnam, uh, yeah. um, Singapore, mm -hmm. Hong Kong. And, and these are countries that have always masked, even before COVID. Yes. And, and right. talk about that, because I, I, I don't want to get, I hope this doesn't offend anybody, but I, my observation is many Asians, people from Asian countries, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's because Somebody once said because there's high levels of pollution, for example, in Beijing, people have just gotten used to wearing masks because the air is not good to breathe or they're more crowded together in many of these countries and particularly in the urban areas. And they just right. but they're they're the ones if I saw somebody four months ago, it was probably a, a, a an Asian woman, a, particularly an older right, Asian a woman with a mask. On. Yeah. Yes. With a mask. And, uh, and so it's normal in Asia uh, to wear a mask. And these are the same countries that doesn't have a lot of death rates. You know, the United States has 5% of the world's population mm -hmm. and over 30% of COVID deaths. Yeah. Now, what's wrong with that, guys? Yeah. The United States 
have 5% of the world's population and over 30% of COVID deaths. What is wrong with those numbers? Yeah. There's a mismatch there, isn't it? Yeah. Can you, can you explain that to me? Why that is? I, I can get deeper into it and say that in some countries, uh, they're used to, they accept authoritarian rule differently than we do. So when everybody gets rounded up or told to do something, they fall in line. There is a Confucian idea that says, it's not about me, but it's about the communi community. You, you are more willing to self-sacrifice for the greater good. We think of ourselves first and then the greater good. We're Americans, we're extreme individualists, and we hate any sort of uh, authoritarian people telling us what to do. So culturally, we're sort of baked into this, this mm -hmm. resistance stand here. That's why I thought somebody would come out and make it fun. Uh, celebrities, baseball players, movie stars, politics. We, it, wasn't, it wouldn't be just negative, you gotta do this. Uh, you wanna do this. Oh my goodness, everybody's wearing a mask. Oh, I gotta get one. Yeah, you wanna do it. There, and I think the other thing is there's much um, for, and I don't know why, I think there's much more trust in governments uh, in other countries. Mm -hmm. For example, the the Taiwanese people and the Taiwanese government, right? They're like, they're like this. Are they okay? Uh, um, you know, Singapore, Hong Kong, the local government. There's much more trust, uh, oftentimes. So they work hand in hand. Um, well, there's more trust in authority. We, we've come. Authority. I, I would say that you know, this, since Watergate and. And, and the continuing crises then under Democrats, under Republicans, and everybody, we've come to view, oh my God, I'm a good Irish Catholic. I don't trust the priests anymore. I don't trust the police anymore. I don't trust the politicians anymore. I don't trust anybody, which goes to the last issue again. We've got, let's say we'll go another 10 minutes here. Yeah. Um, I don't understand this whole anti-vaccine thing. I saw somebody again uh, uh, responding to this most recent shocking survey, national survey, right. and they said, I don't, wouldn't take it because they rushed it. I wouldn't trust it. Others say, I wouldn't take it. It's like the flu, but it's only going to be 50% effective. Others, extreme anti-vaccination, no, I don't trust any of this. It's got mercury in it. It's got something else. It's going to lead to other problems. Um, and so talk about this. I'd love to hear your communal, I think some one woman said, I wouldn't take the vaccine. I, that never occurred to me. We're all waiting, praying, oh, please, can you rush this vaccine so we can all get back to work and we can all develop so, instant herd immunity here? So it boils down to trust, right? Yeah. Um, do, you, do you trust the science behind vaccines and vaccinations? Or, or do you distrust pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. making these vaccines mm -hmm. for profit mm -hmm. right, right? Um, so so really it's a trust issue uh, there is no vaccine that's a hundred percent safe right you know I mean there's you get no a vaccine, drug that's a hundred percent safe you look at the bottom of a drug you'd never take anything that's all they all <laughs> scary Even side effects. aspirin right if, yeah. if you look at aspirin or Tylenol one of the side effects is death yeah right, right. death and death. so so, so it all boils down to trust. And do you trust the data that uh, that is behind the studies for vaccine? Um, so that is that is the the huge issue, and and we know that uh, we don't have a disease today in America called uh, polio, yeah, because right. uh, because of vaccinations. We know that we have, for the most part, uh, in the United States, eradicated conditions like measles, smallpox, because of vaccinations. Right. Uh, until until folks who, until folks decide not to vaccinate, and then we have these outbreaks. Yeah. Right. Right. You heard of the outbreak of measles in California, and then different locations. Other like odd diseases: ru uh, rubella, rubella, German measles, yeah. right? MMR, right? All the stuff you vaccinate. Uh, tetanus tetanus is not something we see today mm -hmm. because of vaccinations mm -hmm. so vaccinations have eradicated diseases e eradicated wipe them eradicated. out they do not exist anymore yeah yes yes uh so it really depends on on if you trust in the science 
behind vaccinations. So let's or stop. Have... Let's stop right there. Do yeah. you trust science? That's what I, I think is on, at the deep core. I'm not sure we trust you, the scientists, like we once did. Um, somebody who puts in here, look at the stream of conversations. They're, they're off on their own debate here in Facebook right now. Somebody, <laughs> somebody threw one in here about GMO and said <laughs> uh, basically GM, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, I don't want to misquote them, but they said, let's see if I can come up with the exact quote here. Um, <laughs> no GMO, no food, not all GMO is bad. Uh, yeah, there was another one here, though. The somebody... GMO debate going on, guys. What do you guys think of GMO, good or bad? And, uh, uh, type in the chat box, guys, GMO, good or bad. And, uh, and let's you... define what GMO is, genetically <laughs> modified. Genetically modified, right? Yeah. Uh, I go in and I splice the little genes so that the plant grows better or it's resistant to bugs and other things. By the way, why do we have GMO? I have no idea. I, I assume to help the farmers because it gets re it makes the crop resistant to bugs and other things. And and here's why. I mean, I think the intent behind GMO, right, is uh, is this: a hundred years ago, let's say we're in 2020. Right. Let's say right. we go back to 1920, right? Year 1920, a hundred years ago. How many Americans lived? A hundred years ago, how many people were in America? Do you know? Uh, have to, we have to do like a Google search. I don't know, but I'd say it's probably less than half. It's probably a hundred million. Maybe a hundred million, right? Yeah. A hundred years ago. A hundred years ago, there were hundred. Let's say we assume there was a hundred million Americans around. Did we have more farmland a hundred years ago, or do we have more farmland today in America? Um, I don't know that it's not a wash, but my assumption now I'm, I'm showing my own bias. I would assume there were more people on the land. Uh, the majority of people made their living as farmers that changed around the late 1800s when people started migrating right. to the cities for the first time. Um, so I would say there was more land under cultivation perhaps, but maybe it's a swap. Maybe it's just big farms now and they used to be little farms. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so you're right. A hundred years ago, there was more farmland. Right. right. Because the industry is not in, you know, manufacturing all that, you know, comparing now. Right. So there's more farmland a hundred years ago. And at the same time, there's less people. Right. A hundred years ago. Right. So, so the farmland we had a hundred years ago fed a hundred million people. Right. We have less farm now and we have 350 million Americans. Right. How are you going to feed more people with less farm? better uh, produce better crops more more output per you per genetically acre. modify your crop so right. that it produces more crop faster at a faster rate bigger and, crops and you lose so, less of it to bugs and diseases and other things and, and, like right right so so genetic modification was required to feed more people with less land right now, now that, that. look at the have, look at the inflammatory. I mean, there's several people saying, "No, this is all again. This is all big pharma, big bucks, <laughs> big." You know, we. Right. Uh, so, so think about it. how do you how do you feed three times more people today than a hundred years ago with less farm? How do you do that? You can't. You can't unless you do something to your crop, right? But I don't, I, you know, now I'll, I'll show, I'm trying to be liberal and open-minded right. and science-based. I have a certain uh, uncomfortableness with something that's genetically modified. That seems like we've opened Pandora's box. Uh, are we going to start having uh, horns grow out of our heads or other sorts of things? I don't know that we've thought through all the implications of that. Uh, that's just, sure. that's fear. That's not, I have no facts to base that. That's just gut, you know. Well, Sherry Ross says we just need to eat less. <laughs> well, the, therein lies the. Cammy says bring back the farmland, right? Yeah. So, so genetic modification allows you to make more crop with less land because we have more people. We have three times, you know, the population a hundred years ago with less land. How do you feed everyone? So you're Unless just saying you it's supply different. and demand. It's just demand. We had to come up with a way to make more food out of less land. 
So the way you do that, the way people did that, was they modified their food genetically to, to make more crops. But right? it, but the food goes into us. I mean, are they? This is going to sound going to sound another like a conspiracist. Right. Are they modifying? Are they genetically modifying me then? Yes. Yes. Now now I didn't say that that was right, or I didn't say that that was good. I just gave you a reason of why we genetically modified our, our foods, right? Because we had to make more food with less land to feed more people. And, right? and, and let's be honest, intent. some of it right. was profit driven too. So if I can get of more production per land, yeah, right. Farming, farming is a business, right? Right. So it's, it is profit driven, right? Now, 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 let me stop you though. Farming now, didn't question. used to be a business. In the 1800s, farming was for yourself. You, you sold a little bit of excess, but the principal yeah. reason you did it was to feed your family. That's correct. That's correct. And it's like that in many parts of the world now. Right. Now, the issue with GMO is this. Yes, we have changed our foods. Yes, we have modified our foods. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, we believe there are issues with that uh, as well with, with potential health, right? Can we prove that? Well, we know that the grain that we have today mm -hmm. looks nothing like the grain we have 50 years ago. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. The grain we have today looks nothing like the grain we have 50 years ago because it's been so genetically modified that, that it's not the same grain we're eating 50 years ago. And, and so what happens is this. Our immune system, which has been with us ever since, you know, creation. Ever since million, the herd uh, round, roamed across the plains here. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. Our, our immune system has been trained to recognize certain foods, mm -hmm. right? Our immune system has been trained to recognize certain foods. Uh, the vegetables we eat, the grains we eat, the rice we eat. And, and it's been trained and to recognize those foods for millions of years, right? right? For as long as humans have been around through, through the process of, you know, microevolution and all that. Right. So what we do is we changed our food with genetic modification. And not only have we changed our foods with genetic modification, we are introducing foods that, that innately we have not recognized with other cultures. So, so lactose, the, did you know that Asians are very lactose intolerant? I did. I, I did because oddly enough, I have a friend who, uh, his brother years and years ago, it was back in the seventies, got the brilliant idea. He was going to build pizza huts in Thailand and he lived there and he saw there were no pizza huts and they're moving to the city. They want to be Westernized. I'm going to, I'm, he got the pizza hut yeah. franchise. He opened it up. It was a disaster everybody couldn't tolerate the cheese they had no they were completely lactose intolerant as a society so our, had no idea so our microbiome the the bacteria that lives with us the the genetics that are part of our culture mm -hmm. uh be, does not recognize necessarily the food from other cultures so Asians are have a higher propensity for lactose intolerance because in Asia they don't drink a lot of cow's milk. Right. Right. Compared to like the Europeans. Right. And because they don't have big pastures like areas they don't have big pastures. Right. So when Asians drink milk, there's a higher propensity for lactose intolerance. So that's what I talk about when I'm talking about our immune system not recognizing other types of foods that may not be part of our culture or or it may not recognize foods that have been you know genetically changed significantly right significantly um <laughs> why is it that gluten insensitivity right celiac sprue is on the rise in the, in the last decade. I, you got me on that one. I never even heard of gluten, much less gluten intolerance until the last couple of years. Right. I mean, you guys on, right, on Facebook, why is it that gluten insensitivity and celiac sprue is on the rise over the last decade? 
I, I know the answer, but what I don't think you want to hear it. Compared to 50 years ago. I, you know what the answer is, because it's an evil plot. There's an evil <laughs> plot that explains everything. I'll tell you why, because our food isn't the same 50 years ago. Yeah. Our food has changed. We have modified it. We have changed it. Our immune system no longer recognizes it. So, so, you get so you're not making a very good case for genetically modified food here. You're saying that the more we do this for practical reasons, because we've got to feed more people, for profit reasons, because we want to get more out of the yield for each crop and lose less along the way, in that impulse to do both, which are totally understandable, we have modified what we eat and therefore changed our bodies haven't adapted. It's going to take generations to adapt to this new modified I'm just food. talking about immunology and and your immune system. I, I, I'm not like pro this or, or anti this. I'm just talking science. If your immune system does not recognize something, it's going to attack it. If your immune system attacks it, it's called gluten insensitivity, guys. Or lactose intolerance or anything. Lactose like. intolerance, right? Any any type of food insensitivity, right? Peanut allergies. Peanut allergies, yeah. Everyone is allergic to peanuts today. Have you heard of peanut allergies as a huge problem 40, 50 years ago? Never. Because the peanuts why aren't is it the like, same. Why is it like everyone I talk to is allergic to peanut these Cause days? Because peanuts have changed. Never occurred to me. Because peanuts ain't the same. Because peanuts ain't the same. We don't recognize it. Anytime you have an allergy, it's simply an immune system that is responding to something it doesn't recognize. That's, that's the definition of an allergy. Well, I'm I just talking science. I think then that uh, that's how we're going to wrap this up because that's what's happening. We're having as a political body, and it, we are re we are reacting negatively to something we've never seen before this COVID crisis, and we're allergic to it. We're uh, we're we're violently not liking this, and we're reacting accordingly here. And uh, as the body politic, we are attacking this information, this something we've never seen before. Well, right. I, I, so, I'm fascinated by the conversation. I'm sorry we have to cut this short. We have another show we have to go to. But look at the Facebook. While you and I are talking, there is a storm brewing on Facebook here. We started off saying to mask or not to mask, to vaccinate or not to vaccinate. And now we're into GMO or not GMO. Bring back farming. Somebody said victory gardens. Let's go back to victory gardens of World War II. You know, everybody start a little garden in your own backyard and grow your own food that's not We're genetically. We're starting a little garden in my backyard. Are you? There you go. Yeah, so. I, I went, we went to uh, Home Depot yesterday to buy some, uh, what is it? A men, a men to, to change soil, to genetically change the soil. <laughs> yes, exactly. We're starting low garden. Yeah. Yeah, it, th th there'll be no no THC in the backyard. Well, but, I'll give uh, you another interesting thing food. that I learned uh, when I first moved into. I live in a suburban home down in uh, uh, you know basically near Ladera Rancho Santa Margarita, the south part of the county here, and I couldn't get anything to grow in my front yard. The grass would die, everything would die. So I went to the water district, had a thing. They said, "You don't realize when they built all these tract homes, they came in with bulldozers and took the topsoil off so they mm. could flatten everything." So the, and then they put fake, they put sod in there knowing it won't last for very long, but it looks pretty until they sell the house. And then the sod dies because you've taken the, the, the rich soil and you're just down to the clay and the, the hard soil underneath it. So amend and all that is just there to try and break down that hard soil that doesn't grow anything and try and turn it back into the rich topsoil that you once removed to build all these suburban tracks quickly and easily. Yeah, tower gardens are great too. I, I want to get a tower garden. Yeah, to go up and stuff. So you've yeah. opened up a couple future topics here. I'd love to talk about GMO in greater detail. Never thought about sure. that one. I'd love to talk about old fashioned gardening over at the Great Park. There are places that you can go rent a little gardening plot if you can't do it really? at your own house. You yeah. can rent a garden? Uh, you don't sort of rent it. Uh, I don't know if it's a price or if it's just a volunteer, but you, there are sections. Uh, over in Ladera, there's a, a community garden that you can get your own little section and grow it. And it's amazing what people are doing there. And they're taking out of this little tiny plot. They tend to go up so they can get more uh, growth out of it. Uh, we had a guest on one of our shows that said urban gardening is back and they're growing things in warehouses and they're doing them by growing them up with uh, wow. controlled lighting. So they don't need 
lots of acreage anymore. You just need a vertical space and you can grow things you, up. And What do you call that, that type of garden where underneath there's like water and goldfishes? where the goldfishes eat the bottom of it, of the... Yes, there is something you right. Know that. I don't know. We'll have to... So there's a whole... Gardening itself is, you know, that, that whole... Retur and that brings in the... Uh, we had some people on about restaurants. The whole heirloom... Uh, um, right. Heirloom varietals. Th things that your grandmother once knew. Varieties of tomatoes that only grew in this neighborhood that had, that had adapted to our soil and it had been right. grown here that have long since been wiped out, except in rare little since they find the seeds and they bring these things back to life, like Jurassic Park, back from the dead. And right, they bring these right. little- oh, Okay, the, the Facebook guy says hydroponic. Hydroponics, there Hydroponic, you yes. so you have top layer and then there's water at the bottom and goldfishes. And it's like a, its own ecosystem. Right. I would well, love to create a hydroponic. Well, you know what that, but that's that's a that's a code. Everything has a code to it now. That's a code word for marijuana. That's how marijuana was grown for years with hydroponics. Serious? Yeah, in in basements and warehouses and stuff. So really? anytime you see a hydroponic store, I know they're going to scream at me. But a lot of it was marijuana cultivation. Really? Here. Yeah. Are you talking from experience, Pa? I. How's your basement looking? I, <laughs> <laughs> I'll really? leave it right there, but. Uh, Fascinating how we've opened up the door just with a little sign to mask or not to mask, to vaccinate or led to the vaccine, led to GMO, led to farming. You know, there is a hunger to get back to what was, and I'm sorry to say, doctor, as a clinical researcher, there is a growing distrust for the science-based approach in life here. We're, we're, not sure, you. we're not sure we like it or believe it anymore here. <laughs> all right, right, thank you. Join us every week and to write us in some topics. I'd love to talk about all these things in greater detail, and I appreciate Definitely. your involvement today, folks, because we need to talk these things through to, to next find Thursday, our- Next Thursday, 8 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, next Thursday at 8 o'clock. Thanks so much for tuning in here. See you guys later. Take care. See you next Thursday, 8 o'clock. <laughs>